here's how I understand it. And to start, we need to go back to modernism. So modernism, as I understand it, understood itself to be headed towards some perfection. So whether that's the modern project kind of, of the utopian world, um, post-enlightenment, that there was an idea that as a society, as we proceeded along our path, and we'll get back to that in a minute, our path, we'd move forward, and uh, eventually we would get to some point that was our ideal civilization. And whether that civilization came about through democracy or science, it was generally thought to be a rational, uh, thinking, democratic society. Now, um, this model, the modern model, which we'll can talk to about the Enlightenment period onward, there's a couple identifying factors. One is that our path is generally defined by the, the dominant um, power. So in Western history and philosophy, it's generally that of uh, the European and generally the European Christian um, that was dominating much of the Western Hemisphere and eventually parts of the Eastern Hemisphere as well through the modern period. So what it was that the, the white men, uh, heterosexual white men who were in control during the period of the modern time in Europe, uh, the amalgamation of what they were doing, the progress they were making, there was a belief um, that they were moving towards some greater society and that there would maybe be a possibility of having um, it all work out, that science would give us answers and that there were answers, specific answers that we could get to. And what science was doing um, and reason and rationalism was um, narrowing down the different places that we thought the point might be um, and figuring out that, in fact, the place we want to go was this one. So we were steadily marching forward, the, the dominant society there. And when I talk about postmodernism, it's not so much about how you have to think. It is how I perceive things proceeding now. And that would be more like this, that there are several paths that societies and subsets of societies and individuals are taking, and they're all headed generally in the same direction. There's some that um, maybe aren't interested in staying in their own lines, and they're crossing other people's. There are some folks who started going one direction and have decided that they let, let go of some of the things that they used to have that were part of themselves and so maybe they've turned back some and in the course of it uh, connected with some other folks and heading forward. And uh, maybe some of these groups uh, are proceeding towards similar lines, uh, similar points, and so maybe some of these groups are heading off in different directions and it's possible that like here, some of these groups are getting ready to turn around and come back and investigate some older traditions or some old ideas that maybe at one point in time were thrown out for one reason or another. And so they maybe appear to be moving laterally or something. Again, this is all just a model. So I'm not suggesting that everyone gets all messed up and gets kind of all in everyone else's business that's what you should do. I'm saying that is what is happening. So postmodernism is not to suggest that modernism is over. I personally think that the word postmodern is an unfortunate name for this thing, but that's what it's called and so that's the word we use. The reason it's not postmodern is because if you look at a single one of these lines, let's say um, this first one, If you ask the cultural group that that represents, so let's say, for example, conservative American white heterosexual Christianity, they believe they're still headed to their point for themselves. So their perspective is still very modern. There's nothing wrong with them. I, I don't think, I don't agree with them. I don't think that where their point is going is where um, we should all be going, or maybe even where I think they should be going, but they still have a modern perspective. So postmodernity doesn't mean that this is over with, that there are cultural groups moving forward to a point where they think they're going to be right. Postmodernity 
is in fact the, uh, a, a meta commentary on the fact that while there are some groups that are still thinking like modernists and that there's one point, there are other groups who are beginning to question the other movement of other groups. And so we begin to have critiques about feminist theory or critiques about queer theory or the domination of, of, um, of whites and, and uh, racism and uh, sexism, classism, heteronormative um, behavior. So all of these questions that happen when cultural groups begin to define themselves and ask their own questions for their own culture, their own people, their own time, and their own tradition, that is the milieu of postmodernity. Postmodernity does not happen after modernity is over because there are still some folks who have a very modern mindset that are living contemporaneously in 2009 and probably for decades to come. So it's not that that thinking is done. It's that in addition to that thinking, there are other kinds of people out there asking different kinds of questions. So what do um, a bunch of squiggly lines have to do with Christianity? Well, here's what I think. Often postmodernism is set up in opposition to modernism. So if you go onto YouTube and, and you type in postmodern Christian, you get all sorts of folks who are um, very afraid of postmodernity about the evils of it. And essentially what they're saying, those people in those videos, is that their one right way is the right way for all people and that everyone else is dangerous and or wrong. Now, often for Christians, that's grounded in um, that Jesus is the truth and the way, and all who would go to the kingdom of heaven have to pass through him. What is missed, and one of the reasons I'm doing this for the image of fish, is the interpretation of that scripture. The interpretation of the body of the history of Christianity is being done by a single fixed group. And if you keep your borders tight and you keep your group more homogeneous, it's easier to interpret it just the way you want and not listen to other possible interpretations. So postmodern modern thought suggests that there's a whole um, multiplicitous, um, manifold number of interpretations for ideas and traditions. And... So the, the idea for the Christian is not that there's no such thing as the right way or the truth or, or Jesus, but that we need to be listening and in dialogue with those minor voices to listen to the people who are on the margins the way that Jesus was listening to the widows and to the women and to the lame when he wasn't supposed to, listening to their voices, daring to transgress, to be... Uh, involved in them so that they can show us um, a part of the world that we wouldn't have seen otherwise because we're just surrounded by the people who are culturally like us. Yeah. I'll close to say that I have a friend, um, Wes Daniels, who's out in the West Coast. He is a Quaker pastor and somehow or another in one of his writings or talking to him, he shared this with me, which is that the old version of, of thinking about mission work is that you go places and you convert them because you understand the way that they should be living. And he said, a lot of people want to give up on, on missional work in general because that's, a, that's pretty scary to a lot of progressive Christians. He said, but he started to think about mission work in a different way, which is that when we go and do mission work with other folks, we are going to a places that are different than from we are, um, how we are. And in those places where we're doing missionary work, we are given the opportunity to see how Jesus and God are at work in the world in a way that we never would have seen. So we make ourselves uh, available to seeing how else it is that God is working in the world instead of trying to force people to see God working in the world the way we already see it. So that kind of transition in terms of thinking about missionary work is exactly the kind of um, open, warm, and inviting thought that I think is available and possible um, and very much biblically based and grounded in Christian faith that postmodernism brings. <laughs>